back to my channel. If you are new here, you must be a crafter, so go ahead and click on that subscribe button. That way later you can check out more of my DIY videos. Now I know that most of us are home right now. We've been social distancing for weeks now, so we've probably been crafting a lot more than normal. And I know how much you've been looking forward to the cute little tiny miniature crafts, but today's video is just a little bit different. About a week ago, I found out that local healthcare places around me are still in need of medical masks, even the DIY versions and the reusable ones, which actually shocked me because I knew they were in low supply in the very beginning of this virus wave, but I thought that they had been restocked since. But that's not true. They are still in desperate need, even though we're several weeks in. So the girls and I have put most of our doll crafts aside and we have been busy cutting and sewing masks just for local healthcare places. So for today's video, I'm showing you how to make a pleated mask with four layers, a filter pocket, a nose wire, so you can form it to your face. So let's jump into the DIY and knock it out. For this DIY face mask, you will need four pieces of fabric cut nine inches by eight inches. It is preferred that one of the pieces be flannel and the rest cotton. If you don't have any flannel, a fourth piece of cotton fabric will work. You will also need two pieces of elastic cut seven inches long. You may notice that this is a lacy elastic. It's not your typical elastic that you would use for face mask. This type of elastic is used in underwear, but it does the job and it's actually nice and soft and comfortable behind the ears. Not only are we in a shortage of face mask, but we're also in a shortage of elastic. And this is optional, but you will need a pipe cleaner five to six inches long. This is nice to have because like I said earlier, it will form the mask to your nose. That way it molds to your face. Start by taking two pieces of your cotton fabric and place them both wrong sides together. Once they're lined up, fold down the top edge and press it about a quarter inch down. Next, take the piece of fabric that you want to be the outside front of your mask and place it wrong side up. Line up your flannel piece, fold the top down about a quarter of an inch and press. Take your pipe cleaner, place it underneath the fold and then pin it into place. Hem across the top line for both pieces. Take one piece of your fabric, lay it right side up, take a piece of elastic, line it up in the corner on the top and the bottom, making sure the elastic is laying on top of the fabric on the inside and not hanging off the fabric. Clip the elastic into place and then cover with your second piece of fabric, making sure it's right side down. Pin around the edges, making sure to secure the elastic in the corners, and then you can remove the clips. I only place two pins at the top and I use these as my guide. I place them about two and a half to three inches in from the side, so there should be about three inches in between them and this part stays open. This allows you to turn the mask inside out and it stays open because this is your filter pocket. Now you can hem around all the edges, but don't forget to leave the opening at the top. I like to do an extra back stitch on all the corners, just securing that elastic into place. Remove the pins, turn your mask inside out, and press. Now it's time to add the pleats. Take your pincher fingers on both sides and start at the top of the mask and just pinch the fabric together. You want the first fold to be about an inch down from the top. I don't like to measure these out because that can get really complicated. I just like to pinch and go. For each pleat, I do like to press it before I move on to the next one. This just holds it into place. That way it's easier to get them somewhat even. I clip them on the side as I go and then I pinch, press, pinch, press. For this mask, I like to have three pleats, and once you've pinched them all together, your final height of the mask should be between three and a half and four inches. Again, I don't like to measure these. They don't have to be perfect. As long as it looks somewhat even, you're good to go. Once I've pressed all the pleats, I like to turn my mask upside down and then pin together the pleats on the inside before I start hemming on the outside. Make sure when you're pinning that the pleats don't shift because if they do, they could look wonky after you've sewn them in place.
And your mask is complete. Elastic straps, pleated face, and a pocket for an extra filter. And here is our finished product. Just place the elastic around the ears. You can adjust the length of the mask depending on your face shape and size. Can you hear me? And then with the wire right here, you can press it along your nose. And as a filter to use on the inside pocket that we created, you can use these blue shop towels that we used in our doll size masks. And you can also use a coffee filter. Now I have done several mask patterns. This one is my favorite just because, not because it's like the quickest or the easiest, but because it's the most requested type of mask in the medical field. Now my friends in the medical field have said they like this specific mask pattern for the following reasons. One, they do like that it's reusable so you can wash it and use it over and over again. And they even use several of these masks throughout their shift just so they can have a clean mask on their face. The second reason is this mask actually has the four layers of protection, one layer being the flannel piece. The third reason is it does have that filter pocket, so there's an opening where you can put extra filters inside, giving it even more layers of protection. And this gives added security and peace of mind, especially for those workers who are actually face-to-face -face with the virus daily. The fourth reason is that nose wire. It's just a bendable piece of like pipe cleaner or any type of wire that you have, normally with the cloth masks. There is a little bit of gap right here, but with that bendable wire, you can sh shape it and form it a little bit better to your face to close any gaps. And then the last reason they like this one is because it does fit over their N95 medical masks. Now some healthcare workers are only getting one mask per week and this is across the nation. That's how low the supply is right now and that can be really scary, especially for those people who are face to face with the coronavirus daily. So wearing their normal N95 mask, even though they have to wear it all week, isn't as stressful if they get to cover it every day with one of these reusable masks and if they have several to use throughout their shift, it gives them a peace of mind knowing that they have that extra layer of protection in front and then they can wash these and reuse them the next shift unlike the N95s if they have to use them every day all week thanks again for joining me on this DIY if you're not subscribed yet and you're still here click the subscription button and the notification bell leave a comment down below with what other type of DIY mask you'd like to see if there are any other patterns or materials maybe you want to know so or a t-shirt mask and I highly recommend if you have the resources and the tools and the material and you are at home, use this time to make masks for your local community. If you reach out, you'll be shocked and completely surprised at how many places really do need these masks. Enjoy this pattern and just craft it.